already. Uh, welcome. This is the Tuesday meeting of the Scarborough Town Council. It is a special meeting starting at 7 o'clock. Today is August 7th. If you would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And roll call, please. Councilor Foley? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Chiazzo? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Donovan? Here. Councilor Chair Baybine? Here. Uh, the purpose of tonight's meeting is a single issue item. It is a public hearing on the 2018, uh, fiscal year 2018 school budget. Um, with that, um, I'd like to just start and kind of cover. I've been asked after the last meeting to kind of refresh our memories about the decorum and some of the rules of the chamber and how we uh, try to uh, be uh, uh, polite and respectful and that we respect each other. So the process for public comments at all of our meetings include the public hearing is that each citizen has uh, three minutes in which they can make um, their statement to the council. Um, our council rules and ordinances do state that those comments should be made to the council or to the chair and sp specifically. That way it avoids really that aggressive uh, kind of reception that some comments can be and how they can be received. So if comments can be directed to the chair or to the council as a whole because we're here to hear you as we try to make a decision on behalf of this uh, community. As well as that we do need to kind of be mindful of the tone in which we take because we are neighbors. And so I do ask that um, we do have specific rules and by the way they are posted in the chamber if you ever wish to uh, read those. But it does ask that we be respectful, that we be accurate in our statements and that we are not personal. So. Um, it's okay to reference people by maybe their titles, but using their individual names um, is really not a neighborly act. So um, as an example, I am often referenced in those comments. If you'd like to refer to me as the chairman or as a counselor, um, that is more respectful than using someone's individual name because then it becomes personal. Um, we've seen that happen in the past and some people are a little bit more um, accurate in how they kind of approach that. So we ask that everyone kind of approach that, um, not only today, but in any other meeting as well. So uh, with that, um, I'm going to simply open it up to a public hearing. And if anybody would like to speak, if you'd like to line up, uh, you have three minutes to uh, make a comment. Good evening. I'm Susan Hamill. I live at 3 Bay Street in Pine Point. And um, I feel like I'm tired of this. I'm sure you are too. But we're here tonight to go through the motions um, to try to get to a new vote on the school budget. Some people will argue one way and some will say the opposite. But at the end of the process, maybe a month or several months down the road, we'll finally have an approved budget. Things will pretty much go back to normal and there's little doubt that the final budget will be very close to what was originally proposed back in May. Probably not even 1% off that number. But we're still not addressing the real problem. We need to forecast and budget more than one year out. We need to reduce our long-term debt. We need to take a hard look at everything we do on both sides, both the school side and the municipal side, to be sure that what we are doing is efficient, effective, and really valued. If you think the budget process was bad this year, wait until next year. We've been asking the town and school for projections for next year, but haven't seen any so far. So we ran some numbers to show what we're talking about. First, uh, let's talk about this year's budget. And just using the number that was voted on July 25th, just because I, I had to pick a number. The schools actually had a little savings account of money left over from the Wentworth School. Actually, it wasn't so little. It was $2.1 million which they used in this year's budget. It's gone now. But I wanted to see what would have happened if that money hadn't been there. Keeping everything else the same, no other changes, we would have been looking at a mill rate increase this year of 5.8%. So what happens next year when there is no money left in that little bank account? Running the numbers and keeping school expenses at level services just a small increase of 3.5%. Municipal expenses, up 3%. And assuming the, that the economy keeps humming along, that we 
that the assessment continues to grow, we'll be looking at a mill rate tax increase of at least 4.5%. And that's with no new programs, no public safety building, no new firemen, no, or police. I mean, so I'm asking you to please, we need to start now to plan for next year, to, to forecast, and to make an honest commitment to, to start now. Thanks. Anyone else that would like to speak? Hi, I'm Dan Quinn from 24 Tenney Lane. Uh, I was here last week speaking uh, in support of, of the school budget, um, and I, I quoted a, a couple numbers around uh, our lower tax rate than, than many of our neighbors, uh, the, the lower per pupil spending than we have um, compared to a lot of the other top tier schools uh, in our area. And following that meeting, I, I actually was surprised at, at the amount of um, feedback I got within the community. So uh, I had the opportunity to talk to, to neighbors, friends, acquaintances, uh, and, and many of the folks that, that had opposing views talked to, to what they believed were inefficiencies or, um, or, or some folks were unsupportive of this just because they had no relatives in the school system. So it was easy to, to kind of disconnect um, that, that personal impact. Um, so, so trying to get an understanding, I just dug into to a few more reports that I was able to dig out just because I had a craving for more information. And I stumbled upon uh, Dr. Andrew Doloff's um, white paper from earlier this year. Um, so some of the statistics that, that he quotes, um, in 2014, the NEE Casey Foundation ranked Maine schools 14th in the U.S. using a matrix of academic measures, 14th. The National Education Association's 2016 rankings and estimates places Maine as low in as 40th um, with respect to per pupil spending. Um, so at a high level, looking at those two, it really wouldn't suggest we have uh, an inefficient, mismanaged, or um, burdensome administration. Um, so the suggestion that we're throwing money at the system rather haphazardly seems to be informed at a high, high level. Uh, Dr. Doloff introduces the state of Maine in this white paper, um, not by diving into some of these statistics, uh, but by defining the importance of schools uh, to our children's safety and future success, uh, and, and then goes on to, to talk about uh, connecting that to the rapidly aging population in Maine and in Scarborough. So Scarborough seems to be exceeding even the state of Maine when you look at those deep demographics and, and the distribution uh, of our population along those age bands. Um, so I, I've seen that, that same pattern professionally. Um, and, and the main policy review actually outlines many of the economic implications um, that, that they foresee. Um, so they refer to this as the aging crisis. And when they talk about some of the key responses that not only Scarborough should be considering, but the state of Maine in total, it ends up being attracting young, skilled um, transplants. Um, so, so like myself, I'm, I'm here uh, for the first time uh, just a year and a half ago. Um, but, but then also thinking about retaining our young people, so um, giving them the skills they need and then holding on to them. So as the father of a growing family, uh, so I have children ages two and three months, I take this personally, but then I also um, very much extend that concern to, to the future of, of our entire community. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? I don't really want to sit here all night and go, anybody else want to speak? So I hope that we all understand that this is a public hearing for you, and if you'd like to speak, I'm going to count on you to get up. And if I don't see anyone getting up, I'm going to rule the public hearing closed. So is there anybody that would like to get up and speak? Going once. <laughs> Going twice. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Could never avoid a great auction moment. <laughs> um, I'm Art tomorrow, and um, I'm very much in support of the school budget. I was in <clears throat> support of the first one and the second one, and now the third one. Um, I, I wrote recently indicating some of my <clears throat> perspectives, which had to do with what we're buying. <clears throat> 
I, I happen to think that the label smart taxes applies very well to, to the work that, that you folks in the school committee uh, have uh, performed. You, you, you're using our, our taxes, our tax dollars, extremely well and in a very efficient way. Just in terms of uh, how we're spending our money on, this, on, the, on the kids. Um, <clears throat> I, I broke it down in a very simple mathematic uh, exercise that gets us to about $80 a day uh, for, for a youngster in our, in our schools. That, that's a phenomenally uh, efficient um, and, and financially powerful statement about what we're accomplishing. But the thing that, one of the things that really uh, concerns me is I hear very little from the folks who object as to uh, how they would do things differently. Not really, and, and that may have been sufficiently publicized and I just haven't seen it or read it or, or heard it, how, how they would do things differently uh, uh, in terms of financial operations of the town and the schools. Nor have I heard much about what, what the number is. What is the number that really works? Is it 2%, is it 2.5%? I, I really don't know to, uh, what, <coughs> what the number is. And, and then what that would represent uh, in terms of what we're, what we're buying for our dollars. And I think the last point I want to make is that I don't, I don't know that there's anywhere in our society where there's a greater disparity in terms of representation, voter representation, of personal interests, whichever position you're in, than in the vote on the school budget. The constituency that is impacted by this vote is not here. They're not old enough to vote. But if we could ask those 3,000 kids, one at a time, where they would fall on the decision as to how that money would be spent, I think we know where the vast majority would come down. But we don't get to do that. I do think in, in those terms, I, I do think about what would the kids have to say about losing that vocational counselor if they had a thorough explanation about that. So anyway, um, I think that you've done a tremendous amount of good work on this. I think you had it the first time around, but here we are, and hopefully it will go down uh, more favorably. But thank you for, your, for the opportunity to speak. I appreciate it. Thank you. How's your game? 74, 74 of it. <laughs> Anybody else that would like to speak? Going once, twice, and I'll close the public hearing. Thank you. And with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. moved. All in favor? Sorry. All opposed? Not seeing any, that's no, unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Jeez. <laughs> 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 can't even.